Welcome back to the now. Uh, military raids involving Air Force officers have claimed the lives of no fewer than 40 bandits in Malele village in the Dansado local government area of Zamfara State. It was gathered that the Air Force, during a series of airstrikes undertaken by the air component of Operation Hadarin Daji, neutralized the terrorists at their hideouts in the village. Also, terrorists on Sunday night reportedly killed over 28 people in separate attacks in Malagum 1 and Sokwong communities of Kagoro Chiefdom in Kaura local government area of Kaduna State. The attack is coming barely five days after an attack was launched in Malagum 1, killing three persons. Joining us live to discuss this is Engineer Musa Idris, a public affairs analyst. Good evening and thanks for joining us, Mr. Idris. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, uh, well, strikes undertaken by the air component of Operation Hadarin Daji have recorded a major victory after hitting terrorists at Malale village in uh, the local government area of Zamfara State. But at the same time, we hear that there were civilian casualties. How would you assess the exploits of the security forces? Are we winning the true victories or are they rather Pyrrhic victories? Uh, uh, you, 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 you just said it all. The efforts of the military. Uh, if you look at their, their, their recent outings, there will be a lot of stuff. Happening. What happened in Kara, in Kara local government is rather unfortunate. You could call it a reprisal attack because there had been a complaint that the police, when they say they had been attacked, and then this, what happened on Sunday, is probably a reprisal. That's what happened. So that also means that uh, it took everybody unaware, especially the military. That is why there's this devastation of casualty that, uh, that, has, that has happened. Uh, this affected community, you capture it correctly. This Sakong Park. There are two wars there where this uh, thing happened in the Kara local government. A very unfortunate, really. I don't know what you mean by reprisal attack because the reports that we got, maybe it's different from what you have, is that um, the Air Force was doing what they needed to do and these bandits ran into a market and they still dropped a bomb inside a market. So some eyewitnesses said that this bomb was dropped and unsuspecting people civilians were affected that's the report that we got so what do you mean by reprisal attack who was who was coming to attack after incurring some losses some time before maybe myself and you we are talking from two different angles it's possible you mentioned kaura local government yes that is probably in uh, in zampara state mm. but this one i'm talking of is one that happened in, in kaura local government mm. and specifically you talk of this affected communities, yeah. which are, there are two words there. If I understand what has been happening, this is simply because the government has not issued an official statement in Kaduna State. So all we are hearing is our own personal investigation. Yeah. So what I have investigated is that these affected communities were actually attacked. That was, that was By the bandits, that. right? Yes, the bandits. What, whatever, whatever you call them. But the way the attack happened, it's more like a reprisal. That is what anybody who you go to ask around the, that area, okay. they will tell you that uh, there had been a skirmish before this time, and I look like the, and then they, again they, they went they went to, to, to this uh, this is attack that, that happened on, on 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 Sunday, but I had expected that by now, the relevant authorities in Kaduna Street would have issued a statement as to the exact happening. So whatever we are discussing here is the snippet of what we have gotten from the community. And as I speak with you, we understand that those who, had, who did that attack are still hanging around within the local government where that attack happened. So I couldn't have seen what a bomb was dropped in the market. So I don't know where you got that from. But from what I know from this community, which of course you mentioned, there was no bomb dropped there. So I don't know why that bomb thing happened. So, this is so exactly the, what I so the bandits or the terrorists or whatever, like you said, whatever name we call them, they are still criminals. Uh, yes. They are the ones who came for a reprisal attack and had those people, including the military, killed. Or no, from, no, from the story no, you are no. saying, there was no military um, no. casualty. No, 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 there was no military casualty there. Okay. Okay, if now, talking of, if, now, just, okay, it is clear now that um, 
maybe there are, there are some stories that are not the same, but uh, there's still a security you probably, issue. You probably mixed yes. up the stories, really. There, there's still a security issue. Of, there's still a security issue. My, my next question, sorry. My next sorry, question is my you. concern. Sorry, sorry, let me help you. Let me help you. Yeah. This just needs to be echoing. But Go you ahead. see, it's, it's we, if you are talking of what happened in, in Sakong, in Park Ward, in Kora local government, there was no bomb drop there, my friend. Okay. That is the story of the matter. Okay. Those communities that were affected are two communities. And this is what the, 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 the community you mentioned. There was no bomb drop in the market there. Okay. So the story of the bomb may just be a false alarm? Certainly not in that in, in current local government. Okay. Very fine. But now, from the statements that we've always said in, in, in Nigeria, that one of our leaders once said that uh, if terrorism festers for up to a month, it stays up to, it endures up to a month, that the government has a hand in it. Do you think this could be a true statement? Because we're wondering why the security forces are finding it difficult to flush out the bandits. Because some stories that we hear are that these bandits are known people. In fact, we've heard cases uh, somewhere in the north there where some bandits were, were given chieftaincy titles. So why is it so difficult to flush out these bandits once and for all? Yes, I, I'm not a military personnel. I just analyze the situation things the way they happen. I'm not aware of a certain leader who said that uh, if a reprisal attack or any skirmish is not arrested within some 13 hours, the government is complicit. I'm not aware of that. What I do know is that in the last couple of years, when I had problems of all kinds of insurgency within some states in the north, that is true of the matter. I also know again that the military issued a statement recently saying that 19 bandits are in their wanted list and they've been working on it. You can see that there were a lot of successes, like I told you, that uh, in that local government dimension in Niger State. They made the situation of uh, arrest. And you also know that he rescued uh, seven Chinese within that similar operation where a lot of bandits were exterminated. These are some of the sources. But because you see, it's more like a guerrilla attack or something. That's why each time the military move one way, the bandits move the other way. So this is what is happening here. But for me, I will expect that what the government needs to do, or rather the military, is to rearrange the security architecture in such a way that all this is happening within the, these areas where there are these bandits, they should move in like a war-like situation mm. where they can surround them and then push on air and on land. Mm. And in that way, there could be a total annihilation of all those insurgents. Because like this guy you mentioned, they know that somebody was giving people the statue. They know there is this, uh, 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 the, the other fellow, fellow tourist who, who was playing with the Sokoto and Zambara Aziz. He's not within the community. Hmm. Recently, he asked that the villagers will not harvest their farm until he's paid ransom. And he, he was actually paid ransom. And if it means he's operating and he's been known, we wonder why he had not been brought, he had not been put up to this moment. Mm -hmm. This is the much I know. But I know that uh, the military is trying all the food to ameliorate some of these uh, skirmishes that happen within the news and clinics or some certain sessions of the local government in the north. Well, you are in the heat of everything here, so you, you know you are talking to us right now from Kaduna State and all that. And this administration, yes. even from the federal to the state level, has said that... Uh, uh, on several occasions, actually, that what the security forces need have been provided. Uh, and we're wondering where else lies the problem. But from what you have observed, because like you say, you are not a mil military personnel, but do you think what incentives and weaponry and everything that they need, uh, they have done, the government has done enough to make sure that this war can be won? Yes, you see, what, what I've come to realize over time, all the governors the Sase governors in the country, they will tell you they are the security chiefs of their state. But what I come to realize is that, yes, you can give it to them that they are the security chiefs of their various states, but they not 
control they do, they don't have command over 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 command and control which means they cannot direct for certain operations to be taken the military does that taking their action from the commander in chief what i know they do they support the military by giving them all they need in terms of uh, logistics and all of that that is why you see sometimes they achieve successes because there are certain areas where they just need to get the assistance of some of these uh, governors where these are uh, affected. So they work in hand in Paris Pass 2 to achieve set goals. That has been done. But the reason why this thing is not being, I mean, ameliorated is what beats my imagination. Because I know that they have a very large number in all the various look and crannies of where these this are, are happening. If they take off this insurgent in a particular locality, you see them in the other locality. Mm. So this will be some imagination. But again, I'm wondering why I know again that uh, drones are being used. And then the military also, through the effort, they go on air and they are done surveillance. And I still wonder why they've not been able to smoke them out of from where they normally find them and all of that. So it's not left for them to tell us exactly why are all this is happening, despite all this effort that they put in. Okay. Well, um, I, I don't know. Just maybe, is there hope for Nigeria uh, to end terrorism, or at least to bring it lower than it is right now? Do you think there are some things that could be done by both government and the people to make sure that terrorism is reduced if it is not uh, totally uh, wiped out? Yes. What As I a can final tell you is yeah. that, you see, the traditional institutions need to come in here. We know in the past, the traditional system plays a major role. From the hamlet to the to the to the to the to the, to the, M, to the chief, to the big or emir, whatever I call them. So it happens that they take first hand information from their people. So from I'm hearing you. Yeah, go ahead please. Just wrap I'm up. saying that you see the let let's take a matter for instance. The mayor of the mayor of Glasgow is a first class chief. Mm. It means that he has his uh, support staff, which can bring him information from their people. How does he act on this information? He contacts security agencies, probably through the governor, which of course will send it to the military or the relevant security government. But it happens that, especially in Kaduna State, some of these, uh, you know, uh, traditional rulers that would have aided the government politically yeah. in achieve some of this security abundance have suddenly been discharged of their responsibility. Some of them were stuck. So you see, and then that recognition I told you, yeah. they are not being recognized as to get them to officially, you know, discharge this responsibility. That's where some of them probably, you may see, they stand aloof and they allow the government and the military to do their operation. But if you settle them with responsibility, yeah. Of, of, of certain functions that they must carry out by that reporting system, I must tell you that we will achieve milestones. That has not been done. Okay. Unless that is done, we continue to cry what we what, what is bedeviling us today. Okay, uh, well, we'd like to thank you, Mr. Musa Idris, for coming on the program and uh, opening our eyes. A lot is happening. Where, wherever it happens, whether in the north or in the south, it affects the entire Nigeria. For exactly. instance, if, if the farmers cannot harvest their crops, it's existing food that comes to the south. So we all are affected, and these are our brothers. Thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you. To accept that your Zoom, Zoom video didn't work. <laughs> Well, we have alternatives. Technology has given us that. This is where we wrap up for um, Plus Politics, brother. Uh, my name is Nyamgul Agaji. Do have a wonderful evening.